Welcome back, my friends, on YouTube. It's a Monday night at 11.43 p.m. Eastern Time. Just a few days before Thanksgiving, we wanted to do another live broadcast here. We got Matthew Pose. How are you doing, Matthew? I'm good. So I want to talk to you today about loudness, about sound, about how the human ear perceives loudness and sound. I know there's a lot of things that, uh, that are online. For years, we've heard, you know, if you want to double loudness, you need 10 dB more um, output in order to do that. And that's not always the case. So I think we should talk about where all that came from, the research that's been going on uh, up until now about perceiving loudness or double volume and just, you know, safe listening levels, all that kind of stuff. We should just talk anything related to loudness. So I know you created this great slideshow. I'm going to share my screen and then we could share it with the viewers here on YouTube. Yeah, it's about the future economy and things we can do <laughs> to keep, no. Let's hope it stays good, my friend. Okay, so <laughs> let me share the screen. And guys, while I'm doing this, please like this video, thumb it up. YouTube is being real sticklers lately. They're favoring the large corporations. And if you don't get a lot of shares and a lot of comments and a lot of likes on a video, um, the video kind of drops off the map after a few days. So let's try to preserve that and get our viewership up so we can keep doing these kind of videos. So do you see my screen now? Yep. Okay, so the title here is How We Perceive Loudness. You probably have the research wrong. So yeah, what do you mean by that, Matthew? Do you want to actually um, make the presentation and do like a presentation mode so it's all they see? You know what? I've not played with this in years, so I'm trying to start figure out over on the left there from oh, the current sliders from the beginning. Same thing. Oh, OK. Yeah, there you go. There Just we go. Click. All right. So, yeah, it's how we perceive loudness. You probably have the research wrong. So we delved into this knowing essentially what everybody said was the research, but having not done a lot of original, um, I'm not going to say research, but that, you know, when you look into a scientific topic, one of the things you have to start with is uh, what's called a lit review. So you jump into the literature to see what it says, and then you use that as a jumping off place for whatever you're going to do next. So we jumped into the literature and we were surprised how wrong we had it. So we can go to the next one. There we go. Okay. So I think, you know, before we get into this topic, we need to talk about what is loudness. It's actually a lot more abstract than I think people realize. You say to somebody, what's loudness? And I think they'll, everybody will have an answer. So it's the subjective. I'm so, yeah, it is. Loudness is the subjective uh, perception of how changes in amplitude take place. So as something becomes louder, the amplitude becomes bigger. So the objective measure is the change in amplitude. But subjectively, we perceive that as what we call loudness. The problem is, because it's subjective, we have no idea what that really means. Yep. So then that raises the question, what is twice as loud? Well, the scientific answer, that's what most people are going to tell you, and it's still basically considered right by most scientists, is that 10 dBs is the, sci it's, is the standard for doubling in loudness. And if you subtract 10 dBs, that would be considered half as loud. So 70 dBs is half as loud as 80 dBs, and 90 dBs is twice as loud as 80 dBs. Now, it's important to note, if you want to get 10 dB more loudness out of an amplifier that's powering a speaker, you literally have to have 10 times the power to do that. Yeah, you double your power for every three decibels. And right. so that's uh, a lot of power. So that, guys, that means if you're at 10 watts, if you want it to allegedly be twice as loud, according to this, you have to go from 10 watts to 100 watts on that speaker to get the perception of twice the loudness. And you can start to understand why when you start dealing with things like, let's say, cinema or THX reference levels, or even just relatively loud listening levels, or add into the phrase something like inefficient speakers, you can quickly run out of amplifier power. But we can yeah. go on to the next slide. So of course, I said before, that's what the research says, and it's commonly accepted. But you know, as we jumped in, we found was, well, or is it? Is that really what the research showed? So the concept of 10 dBs um, was really a standard that was relative to one kilohertz. That's the first thing you need to know is that the 10 dBs actually started with doing some studies where they were doing either one of two things. One was they were creating essentially what are known as, we'll get into these later, but equal loudness curves. 
which are designed to be relative to one kilohertz or literally using one kilohertz sine waves. And so the actual dB difference, it turns out, differs by the frequency. It just depends on what frequency you're concerned with. As I said, it follows the equal loudness curve. And research did not show exactly 10 dBs. Some showed 6, some showed 10, some showed 9. The numbers were all over the place, but based on some calculations that were pulled from the equal loudness curves, 10 ended up being the kind of rounded up number that they chose and became an industry accepted standard. So yeah, we can go ahead and look at those equal loudness curves now. So these are the equal loudness curves, and this is the, the newer accepted one. So what I want you to look at here is notice that they're always 10 dBs apart at one kilohertz, but they're not at other frequencies. They're not at, for instance, 10 kilohertz, but more importantly, they're not below 100 hertz in the base. Yeah, they start converging in the base frequencies. Yeah, our ears are very insensitive to low frequencies. I mean, you can just see how insensitive they are. Look, the threshold for base, like the, the quietest base we can hear at 20 hertz is right around, what, 70 decibels or so? Right. So that's that's pretty loud by most. Like if I told you I'm going to play music at 70 decibels, you would think that's very loud. But actually, it's the quietest bass at 20 hertz you can hear. So the other thing that I want you to look at is is that actually, even though they're all bunched up in the bass, they do spread out as you get louder. So what that means is that not only is 10 dBs not the relative uh, doubling of, of um, output at every frequency, but also not at every output level. It depends. Yeah, so for example, as you get towards 100 dB, the space between the next levels gets larger in the, ver in the vertical axis. Yeah, and it's of course worth noting, once we get up to the top there, we're looking at 140 decibels at the upper line. You're talking about permanent hearing damage and pain. So oh, yeah. this is academic, you know, what we're talking about. Yeah, guys, about. don't try this at home. Don't try to, you're <laughs> not going to probably get 140 dB out of your speakers anyway, but don't don't try to listen at these levels just to, to prove this point. So yeah, we can go on to the next slide. And here we've got actually something that it's on the right just so you can see it. I actually included another, um, graphic of the equal loudness curves. And this shows the three different types that exist. So um, you've got the, um, I should say the, the ISO standard one, which is the red one, which was designed to match pretty closely with the Robinson Datsun one, and then the older Fletcher Munson one. So you can see the issues. The Fletcher, Fletcher Munson one actually flattens out as you get louder in the bass frequencies, which is incorrect. Um, you know are, what's interesting about that, Matthew, not to interrupt you, but if you, yeah. if you go back to like the 70s, and even the early 80s when you would buy a receiver and they would have a loudness button on them. Mm -hmm. The loudness button was always based on Fletcher Munson compensation. Yeah, well, and you can, I mean, there's something to be said for this, but I think I, this is an area where I like, I kind of rather like a Sean Olive or a Floyd Tool jump in because I don't want to say that I'm an expert in this, but my understanding is that it doesn't actually make sense to EQ your speakers perfectly in conjunction with the sensitivity differences that we have here that um that the concept of loudness actually was true it made sense at lower volume levels you want to turn the bass up for it to remain sounding full and normal yeah. but if you literally follow those curves it's too much and it kind of makes sense because at 100 decibels which would be the upper end of our uh, uh like loud listening level that we might use you're looking at 130 decibels in the bass frequencies like that's really loud and and you can't most most com most consumer speakers can't even come close to reaching that at base oh, frequencies. No, actually, at twenty hertz, you'd be lucky to hit a hundred decibels with yeah, most, exactly. even really yeah. good subs. Yep. So, but in terms of what this says, so in terms of twice as loud, as I mentioned, the space between the curves is much smaller at low frequencies, which we went into. The space between the curves varies with level, which we talked about. So twice as, as, a, as a result of this, twice as loud is much smaller at low frequencies, and the absolute value would depend on how loud your reference is. So these yeah, are and you know, points. And I've, um, I've wondered about this years ago when I was writing all those multi-sub articles and um, with that whole 10 dB thing, and I, I started talking to people like um, Ed Mullen from SVS, mm -hmm. and the best I got out of him was he, he was under the, um, I guess he was under the assumption that just about 4 dB at base frequencies, increasing your output by 4 dB gives you a perception of twice as loud, you know, below 80 hertz, not 10 dB. And that's when I started realizing, you know, this is definitely not a linear relationship on frequency or an amplitude. 
at more normal to low listening levels, even about a one and a half decibel difference could be perceived as a doubling in loudness. So it doesn't take much at very low frequencies at the lower end of our listening level. And part of that has to do with the fact that our, our hearing sensitivity at low frequencies is so poor. Right. As it gets louder, we do need loud, like higher amounts of uh, increased output to be perceived as a doubling in loudness. So four is kind of a good average if you want to look at what it would be from, let's say, 100 hertz down to 20 hertz in the kind of normal listening range. But if you're at the bottom quietest level of the listening range, it's even less than that, especially at the lower frequencies. If you're at the upper loudest end of the listening range, it could be higher than that. Sure. And guys, that's another reason why I, I know we always preach multi-sub because we want to even out the room modes and have smoother bass at every seat. But even with subs not being co-located, at the very low frequencies, because the wavelengths are so long, you get a coupling factor that actually sum, it sums the responses of the subs and you get not quite up to 6 dB of output increase, but maybe a good 3 or 4 dB output increase. And you think about that, that's doubling your headroom. I mean, that's giving you a, perce a perce uh, perception of almost twice the loudness by just adding that second sub. I would go so far as to say, I think you would actually see the full 6 dBs at 20 hertz. Above yeah, that, that you're right, hertz. but it, I was it, talking maybe between 20 and 50 hertz, you know. Yeah. And you're you right. Should, yeah, 20 hertz, definitely. Because you're yeah, a 50 foot I, wavelength. I think by about 30 hertz and below in most rooms, you would start to see the full six decibels of coupling. And it's a, it's a good and bad thing. Most larger rooms, especially rooms that are in the neighborhood of 20 plus feet long, end up having a mode below 30 hertz. And so that 6 dBs of coupling means as you start to add in subs, the mode keeps getting bigger. Yeah. Yep. You could see that when you sweep someone's room, like in my old house, I would have pretty flat response down to about 30 hertz, and then I'd have like a 15 dB bump at 25 hertz. Yeah, it's the one thing the multi-sub will not necessarily address is that lowest mode. That's EQ fixes that, because it's well, also yeah, consistent. Well, yeah, that's why you need EQ with multi-sub. Right. But all right, we're getting off topic. We can move yeah. on. So um, out of all this research that I was talking about came two concepts, con whoa, <laughs> concepts. What's a phone and sone? So a phone is a unit of measurement for examining changes in SPL accounting for perceptual loudness. So those equal loudness curves. So 60 phones is equal to 60 dBs at one kilohertz. But remember, 60 dBs at one kilohertz was actually 100 dBs at 20 hertz. And a sone is a standardized unit of loudness based on phones at 40 dBs, such that each doubling in sones is a doubling in loudness in phones. In other words, First, they decided, well, we can't, dBs is too generic. It doesn't tell us enough. So we're going to come up with phones. But then they said, well, this 10 dB thing is too confusing. So we're going to come up with sones. Somehow that was going to make it better. <laughs> and the idea with sones was if you had one sone, that was uh, 40 decibels, as I mentioned. If you had two sones, that was 50 decibels. But they wasn't really 50 decibels. It was 50 phone decibels, which, as I said, was actually based on the equal loudness curve. Four zones is equal to 60. Uh, I should have said phone. Sorry about that. Um, and so on and so forth. So the idea was that as you doubled your zones, you were actually doubling loudness in this more like legitimate sort of linear fashion. And it made sense. Right. And so, Go ahead. So just in layman's terms, if, if so people understand this, what you're saying is if you have a tone at 60 dB at one kilohertz, in order for us to perceive that tone at the same loudness at 20 hertz, it has to be... You have to adjust it up to 100 dB. That's 40 dB more. Exactly. And so phone was a way of standardizing that. So you didn't have to keep basically saying all that to people. You could just say it's 60 phones, which happens to mean 100 decibels at 20 hertz and 60 decibels at 1 kilohertz. Gotcha. So the issue, though, was, as I said, the research was never quite that straightforward. That was sort of just an accepted standard that fell in the middle, if you will. And so research progressed. In fact, as time went on from around the 70s on, new things were found out that I would argue invalidated the concept of the phone and the zone as it had been put together. And yet the standard was never really updated. Okay. So wait, there's more. <laughs> the method of studying loudness was highly biased. So it turned out that as researchers started to look into this, they found that the method that was being used was actually biasing the results. And, and the method that was being used basically was that they were incrementing in 10 decibels like this. So um, recent research found that the bias led to an overstatement of the doubling of loudness. It really probably isn't 10 decibels. Research also shows that the perception of loudness changes depending on the sound stimulus 
and past research used white noise and sine waves. So what that means is musical signals or some sort of a complex signal that's like music, when you look at that and show and uh, essentially give that to people and say like, what sounds twice as loud to you, gave very different results than when you handed them white noise or sine waves. Neither of those are anything close to real music. Yeah, because there's no harmonics in a sine wave. You're just hearing a, a discrete tone. You're not hearing any har harmonics after that like you would with music. I Yes, and I think there's probably lots of things that were going on. Um, but, you know, basically it wasn't a great way of doing the research and it ended up leading to a bias. And so new research was done and we'll go into this, but basically they found six decibels was probably a more accurate number. And this, again, this is six decibels at one kilohertz. It's still going to be frequency dependent. Right, right. And loudness dependent. Yes, and loudness dependent. So we can go on to the next one. So is that George Carlin? It kind of looks like him, but I don't think it is because I found <laughs> it as a free image. So how much is a doubling of loudness? As I said, maybe closer to six, deci six decibels, but nobody knows. I think the real takeaway from the newer research was not that we have a new number. It was that we need to do more research. You know, that's often what happens when you dig into something. I was actually talking to somebody in, in my day job. Um, she's a, I, I would call her like a mentor, somebody I've worked with for a while who's been doing the kind of work that I do for much longer than I have. And we were talking about this idea that whenever you delve into a certain topic, it seems like once you really scratch the surface and dig in, things are a lot messier and uglier than they seem. The research is never as good as everybody presents it as. Sure. And, um, Beyond that, it turns out that trying to come up with better research or give better answers isn't easy. It's it's actually really easy to tell why they did what they did, because once you start to delve in, you realize humans are really hard to study. And the concept of loudness is not nearly as concrete as it seems. It's that matter between the ears that makes things so difficult. It does. So we can go on. So by the way, that the predator, hopefully people get why I put that there, but we're going to say the plot thickens here. So we were more sensitive, it turns out, according to some even newer research, that we are more sensitive to approaching sounds than those that are receding. So sure. when something sounds like it's coming at us, it gets louder. And we're more sensitive to that than when, it sound, when an object is leaving us and, it, and that causes it to get quieter. So I'm curious, Gene, do you get why I threw the predator Oh, in? of course, because if it's going back to survival instincts, you know, when we were back in the days before we were civilized and we were hunters and we were also fleeing uh, predators, it really mattered what was in front of us more than what's on top of us or even behind us. Exactly. It was a greater threat to us. Um, and so this is very likely, we don't know this, but given that it doesn't make a lot of sense that we would be more sensitive to objects getting coming at us versus objects going away from us, it makes sense that probably was a biological adaptation that helped us survive back when we were out being attacked by predators more often. Um, so it turns out that the concept of twice as loud, the number of decibels to be perceived as twice as loud is actually a bigger number than what is needed to be perceived as half as loud. And so this led to some people to say things like 10 decibels is twice as loud and six decibels is half as loud. So losing six decibels would be half as loud. But I have to be really honest in saying when I read the two articles that this came from, my takeaway was that's a massive oversimplification of what the researcher found. I think that researcher would even agree that probably more research is needed before we could drill down to a single number like that. But one of the other interesting things was that not only did the numbers differ, but the nature of the stimulus, in other whether it was music-like stimulus, voices, white noise, or sine waves, all had a pretty huge effect on this too. Well, you know, it, it almost doesn't make sense because if you're saying that it takes 10 dB to get twice as loud, but only 60, 6 dB to go half as loud as that, then to go twice as loud again, you're going to be higher than you were before you did all this. So it's almost like it's confusing when you think about how is that not linear going from loudness to, to twice as loud to twice as twice less loud, I should say. Well, and it's or half I, as loud. I, and I think the key here is to remember that the concept of twice as loud and half as loud we're when we we're applying like an objective concept to that you know you take a number what's half of 10 it's five what's twice 10 20. but when it comes to what we're talking about here when you say what is twice as loud loud doesn't really have any meaning to it yeah it's it's an abstract concept so when you go to somebody and you say what's twice as loud 
it's just their opinion of what sounded twice as loud, whatever that means for them. And the way the research is done is literally you get you set them up in a situation where they can adjust the volume of sounds. And they're basically asked asked to stop the volume change when it's perceived as twice as loud. And you do it with a large pool of people and then you average the numbers. Right. And that kind of gives you the range. But, you know, one guy might say 25 decibels is twice as loud. And another guy might say three decibels is twice as loud. I mean, the point is, this is so abstract that it's hard to really try to apply it to something more concrete, like the mathematical half or double concept. Sure. So what does this all mean? I think there's two important conclusions here. As I said, common knowledge in audio often is inaccurate and oversimplification of research. And I think this is actually much more common. We stumbled upon it with loudness, but Gene, I'm sure you'd agree, it comes up with all sorts of topics in audio. Oh yeah. I mean, we could talk about how some companies manipulate the double blind listening test and how sure. they oversimplify their results by reject rejecting the null hypothesis. But we'll save that for another topic. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's very common to oversimplify the findings. And I can just say as somebody who works in a, a more of an academia like background uh, for my day job, uh, research, good researchers will very rarely draw hard conclusions because the kind of research we do doesn't typically lend itself to that. There's always room for more research. There's always room to question what was found. And so it's more like it's suggestive of something. And that's usually the strongest language you want to use. But when it comes to something like marketing, you can't say, well, our research shows that uh, we can suggest our speaker might be better than other people's. It's just not yeah, good yeah. enough. And in the case of loudness, like I said, it's so complicated that I can see why it would have been easier to just say, let's just go with 10 decibels at one kilohertz and then use the whole phone concept. Well, if you think about it too, I mean, that's how a lot of the magazines and, and even the FTC was rating power and amplifiers at one kilohertz, you know? I mean, it's very right. rare that you see full bandwidth ratings and power amplifiers. Everything was always referenced to one kilohertz. Right. So, and I already mentioned humans are really complicated. And Gene, you were talking about our brains or what, the, what caused that. But, you know, through all of this, I think that you and I came to a conclusion of what we're willing to accept because we're in the same problem that the rest of the scientific field and the audio world, if you will, is, which is you still got to pick a number. We have to have something we're willing to use when we want to talk about doubling and having loudness because it's important for things like how much louder does a speaker need to be as you go to a larger room? Yeah. Or how much louder does a speaker need to be to more accurately reproduce uh, higher output levels, basically in movies, for instance? Like how, how much louder does you really need to be to go from loud to very loud or very loud to extremely loud and you should be yelled at? Right. So let's go ahead and, yep. So um, what, you know, what about loudness? You might, you probably listened to all this and said, you're still confused. And I just want to make clear, so are we. You know, I don't, I don't know that we drew any final conclusions. We did pick numbers. There is no single number to point to. I can't give you that. The research doesn't allow me to say that. It appears to be content and frequency dependent, as I mentioned. And it also appears to be uh, relative loudness dependent, meaning it, how much louder it needs to be to be perceived as double loudness depends on how loud you're listening at in the first place. And really, if we wanted to get even more concrete answers, we probably need to do even more research. I mean, most of these studies were using sample sizes that were in the neighborhood of like 30, 40 people. That's not yeah, a lot of people. That's almost statistically insignificant when you think about it. It depends on how many trials they do with each person. You can make that good enough. But yes, right. that's a problem, and including yeah. you're using the same person multiple times in that case. Sure. You know, you, one other key uh, thing to remember here is all of these, from what I'm hearing from you saying, all of these loudness tests were done with either white noise or tones. They were never really done with music. Is that correct? I don't know that music was ever used. None of the ones that I found used music. Sometimes they used um, things that were designed to mimic speech and things that were designed to mimic music in the sense that they were complex tones. Um, but actual music I don't think was ever used. I will say if you're trying to get to something as concrete as twice as loud versus half as loud, music would be hard because there's so much variability in the music that it could actually skew the results itself. Yeah. But, you know, the dynamics and stuff. Yeah. The other side of this is <clears throat> maybe that's important to know too. Maybe the complexity of real music affects the results so much, but anyway, we're, we're not going to conduct that research. So no. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <clears throat> audioholics, 
you know, really Gene and I sat down and, and as I said, we had to pick numbers and we, we thought, you know, what would we be willing to accept? And we think a value of between four and six decibels is reasonable. And probably for standards, for instance, we would go with six decibels. We believe that 10 decibels is probably too high. So when you look at all the research, it doesn't seem to really support that 10 decibels was right. That seems, as I said, that the research that was done more recently seems to suggest that that was actually a uh, biased result. And I think more importantly, the demands that that places on real speakers and real listening levels is a little bit too great. And, and then your finally, ears. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> and then finally, I think that, you know, Gene, you would agree that we think that the value should be much lower at base frequencies. And as I said, at lower listening levels, I actually think that you would perceive a doubling of loudness in the low frequencies, probably as low as one or two decibels. And once we get into more modest um, to loud listening levels, probably four decibels is a good number to choose for that. Sure. So now I think after we've talked about all this though, and we showed everybody these listening charts that suggested they need to have 140 decibels at 20 <laughs> hertz, we probably need to mention that maybe the, <laughs> something about safe listening levels. So there's, there's a lot, I think we could probably do a whole 10 minute video on this too. Mm -hmm. It's a big topic. Actually, I didn't realize how long we've been going. So I guess we could do a 20 minute video on this too. Um, but basically 85 decibels is commonly referred to as the upper end or loud level for movies and for music. And that leaves what they say 20 decibels for dynamic range, which means peaks can be as high as 105 decibels. But if you look here, you'll see that's really loud. In fact, yes. a lot of the current thinking is that that maybe is too loud and that even that is not really safe. The argument was that 85 decibels was safe if you were exposed to it for eight hours a day and no more. A current research actually suggests that it's not about how long you were exposed to a particular level, but how much total exposure you have in a day overall. And what that means is that if you, for instance, spend your day in a louder than normal environment, let's say the average volume level is 75 decibels, then 85 decibels for music is dangerous for you because your overall day is already too loud and it puts your hearing at risk in the long term. On the other right. hand, if you spend your day in an anechoic chamber, listening to music at 85 decibels is probably fine because you're spending most of your time at a very low level. And so since nobody does that, everybody's exposed to some environmental noises. The point of all this is probably we shouldn't be listening that loud. Definitely we should not be listening at 140 decibels at low frequencies. There's a, a number of health conditions that that can cause. And uh, I don't know what the research says on hearing damage at 20 hertz, but I, I would think that wouldn't be good for you. Probably not good for your heart, you know. Yeah, right. But, yep. So um, I could tell you, I could tell you from experience that I could not sit uh, for eight hours at eighty-five dB. You know, if you go to a movie that's three hours long, and the average movie theater is probably at eighty-five dB, I get fatigued by the time that three-hour movie is done, and that's only three hours. So I can, I could not imagine sitting in a movie eight hours long at eighty-five dB. Well, and that's really just the voice levels. You still got those dynamic peaks, which yep. can actually at low frequencies be as high as 115 decibels. And there's, this is a, again, this is a whole nother video. To, I won't go too much into it, but there's some studies that have shown that some cinemas are just too loud. Some of the cinemas are actually, um, have shown that some of the peaks are over 120 decibels. So you know, the point is we don't need to listen that loud, not in our homes. It's, it's just not good for our hearing. And I don't know that music and movies sound any more realistic at those kinds of volumes. Yep. Um, for some reason, I don't see you on the screen. Oh, but... I still see myself. Okay. I guess I don't know. This, you know, the StreamYard program is a little flaky, but it's easy to use. So we put up with it. But I think we've covered this topic pretty well. Matt, I appreciate you putting together this slide presentation. This was awesome. Um, I think this is a kind of a new format for us to start doing now with these live streams. I'm going to volunteer you to do these slide presentations so we could have some cool stuff to discuss. Not a problem. These are not that hard to put together. Awesome. Well, guys, I hope you like this video. Um, please thumb it up. Join our Patreon at patreon.com slash audioholics. You get access to content before it comes on YouTube, and you also can uh, ask us direct questions and suggest video topics you'd like to see us cover. So I uh, hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving, and until next time, 
Keep listening.